Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can edit a photo in Photoshop using the histogram and why you may want to use this as a reference point. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the image histogram to learn something about your image and how to fix the image using this histogram. And we're going to do so via an adjustment layer with layer new adjustment layer. And we're going to use curves because curves has a histogram built into it. Now the reason why I recommend that people use the histogram to edit their images is that the histogram isn't going to lie. It's going to tell you how the exposure is and the range of tones that you have in your image. And this is particularly important if you're trying to edit on a laptop screen because it's really hard for you to see exactly how light and bright or how dark the image is because the laptop screen itself, the angle at which it is standing, is going to affect that. But it's not going to affect this histogram. The histogram is always going to tell you about the image. Now one thing to understand is that there is no such thing as a perfect histogram. Histograms do not need to be that sort of normal curve. The histogram is going to be whatever the image is. There are just some things you want to try and avoid. And one of those is that the histogram, this chart here, runs into either end of this chart. Because if it does, it means that you've got plug shadows or blown out highlights. But essentially that's all that you're looking for is that you're looking for things that the histogram is not rather than what it is. This is the histogram for this image. And the histogram is telling us the range of tones in the image. So essentially what Photoshop is doing is it's going to this image and it's taking every single pixel and it's looking at it. And it's saying, OK, on a range of 0 to 255, where is that image or that pixel in terms of lightness? And it's adding up how many pixels it has at each lightness point. So what we're saying here is that we have quite a few of the darker pixels in this image and we've got quite a few mid-tones as well. But you know what we don't have? We don't have any whites at all. There's nothing here that is a white. Anything brighter than, I'm just trying to read it off here, about 199. So this image lacks whites. Now, you may have seen a histogram before. You might have seen it in Photoshop, but you've probably seen it on the back of your camera. And that's exactly what your camera is trying to tell you when it shows you a histogram. It's saying, this is the tonal range of the image that I just shot. And if it does not look good on the back of the camera, it's not going to look any better when you get it to Photoshop or Lightroom or wherever you're processing. And had I seen this histogram, had I looked at it on the back of my camera, I might have said, well, you know, I'm shooting a bit underexposed here. So perhaps I should be making some adjustments to the exposure compensation on my camera. But also I know that I was shooting in RAW. This is a DNG image and so it's a RAW image. So I know that I've got a fair bit of play with this image in fixing it. And I would prefer to shoot a little underexposed than overexposed because I know that I've plenty of room to adjust this image. So now that we've looked at the histogram for this image, let's look and see how we might use the histogram to edit the image. Well, in Photoshop, we have this curves dialog. We're seeing the histogram here. We can drag in on this point here to lighten the lighter tones of the image. What's happening here is that now we're saying to Photoshop, if it's only 194 on the lightness scale, we want you to take it up to 255. Make it a lot whiter. And if I were just to click away from this image, and if we were to go back in and do layer new adjustment layer curves to apply another curves adjustment, we'd see the fixed image. And you can see that the tonal curve has been moved across. There are now some light pixels in the image. I'm just going to get rid of that curves adjustment layer. Let's go back to the one that we were actually working on. Because with the curves adjustment in Photoshop, in addition to the ability to move the ends of this chart in and out to darken the darkest areas of the image or lighten the lightest areas of the image, we can also adjust the midtones. 
So typically the kind of adjustment you would make is a shallow S-curve dragging up here on the lights and dragging down on the darks. And what that's doing is it's isolating these darker tones in the image and darkening them a little bit and isolating these lighter tones in the image and lightening them a little bit. And the result is that the curve line here is steeper across this area of the image than it is here or here. We've added some steepness into the mid-tones of the image and the impact of that is that we've added some contrast into the image. Just going to move this out of the way and I'm going to turn this eyeball icon on and off so that you can see the result. This is the original image, poor tonal range, not a lot of lights here. And this is the fix. Not only have we got some lighter and brighter pixels, but we've also got some darker pixels. And the darker pixels have been darkened, the lighter pixels have been lightened, and everything through the middle of the image has had a little bit of a contrast boost before and after. So I'm just going to apply that to this image. And let's go and see a couple of other images to see what we can see in the histograms for those images. Now this image is interesting. It was shot with a flash and it was shot very, very early in the morning. And I wanted to shoot with a flash because I wanted to bring up the detail in this leaf but have the whole of the back of the background of this image go to black. This leaf was actually hanging on a piece of a spider web. So let's look at the histogram for this. And we're doing this through the curves adjustment. Now, as we might expect with this image, because most of it is dark, all the detail here in the image, or most of the detail in the image, is in the dark area of the image. And we've got what I just said a few minutes ago was what we didn't want to ever see. We did not ever want to see the blacks in the image hard up against the edge of this chart. Well, this is an exception because in this image, the thing of interest is this leaf and we don't care about the fact that we've lost the blacks. In fact, I want to lose the blacks even more because you can see here that there's some grays in this area of the image and I don't want them to be gray. I want them to be black. So I want to totally kill the background on this image and I want to just leave in place the detail in the leaf. But look what happened when I added this extra black to the image, when I dragged in on this tone. See how much more detail I got in this leaf? It's a whole lot more colored, contrasty, because of the blacks being rendered a little bit better in the leaf itself as well as the background of the image. Now I can lighten the lights a little bit if I want to. And I can darken the darks if I want to. But here's the before on this image. Here's the after. And you can see that, again, there's no such thing as a bad histogram. In most images, this would be an appalling situation where we've lost all our blacks. But for this particular image, it actually works. It's exactly what I was intending to capture. Let's have a look at another image. This one is a very light image. It was a light, bright morning. And this image is showing light, bright details. Let's have a look at its histogram. Not unsurprisingly, we don't have a lot of darks in this image. There's nothing here that's pure black. And we have light pixels pretty much up to white. Now this is a PEF image. It's a Pentax RAW format image. So we know that we've got a little bit of latitude in processing this image. If I were fixing this image, there's a couple of things I would be looking at. It would be really nice to have some darks in this image. So I'm just going to bring this dark end of the chart over just a little bit because I want just a little bit more contrast. I may choose to increase the brightest areas of the image a little bit and then just tip down a little bit on the darker areas of the image just again to bring a little bit more contrast between the plant and the sky. Let's see the before and the after. There's just a little bit more contrast, a little bit more richness of the background here that's something that I might be looking for in this image. 
and we've got one final image and we have one final image to look at. Again, this was a raw image and the image is looking pretty good to me. There's quite a lot of darks, there's some lights in the image, there's some good detail here. Let's see what its histogram is going to tell us. Again, I'm using curves here. I'll click OK. Well, the histogram is telling us that this image is tending a little bit on the dark side. Well, we could probably have told that by the amount of darkness around here, but also we do have some light pixels. We've got some black pixels, we've got some light pixels, and this is a little bit more like the normal curve, but it's just skewed a little bit towards the darker edge of the image, and that's just fine. That creatively is exactly what I want in this image. Perhaps if I had a choice, I may actually just drag down here a little bit just to try and get a little bit more detail in the darker areas of the image and perhaps drag a little bit up on the lighter areas, trying to get a bit of contrast in this interesting area of the image. Let's see the before and the after. It's a little bit more contrasty and it's a personal decision as to whether you like that extra contrast or not. So you can see that the histogram is a really handy way of ascertaining the tonal range in your image to see whether you've got blown out highlights, plugged shadows, and in Photoshop and Lightroom and Photoshop Elements, it's a way that you can adjust your image. Now in Photoshop, if you're using a much earlier version of Photoshop, you may find that that curves adjustment does not have the histogram. It wasn't put in there, I think, until something like CS3, but you can find it in Levels. So go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels, and Levels only has a histogram. That's all you've got. You don't have the chart, that curve here, but you will have a histogram here in levels that you can use. Now this that we're looking at is just the grayscale histogram. You can actually identify individual channels, red, green and blue, but for this video I wanted to make things fairly simple and for us to just look at the grayscale of the image. So if this image were converted to a monochrome image, exactly how we would plot that tonal range. And that's a pretty good guide. Most of the time that'll get you a really good start on editing your photos. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this YouTube video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.